You ready? Yeah, ready. God said he forgives you. Yep. God said he forgives you. <laughs> that was so arrogant to say. <laughs> All right. Uh, for us, we be we are going on seven years of marriage in March. We have three children. Our oldest is Eden. She is six. Our middle child is Autumn. She is two. Our youngest child is Sage. She is three months. And so we in the thick of it. But we're very new at this at the same time. <laughs> and so we want to just offer the little bit of wisdom that God has given us in a short period of time. Yep. Um, and so thank you for having us. Yeah, so we got five points. That's it. It, it, it ain't a whole lot. Just five points. Uh, about things that we are trusting God for or things that we are thinking through that we try to apply to our parenthood so that uh, we can raise children that love God and love people. Mm -hmm. um, the first point is one um, that I wrestle with a lot, which is I'm trying to be very intentional about not parenting out of my dysfunction. And I say that because when I started to go to counseling, I realized that so much of my behaviors and thinking patterns and responses to pain or trauma or irritation or frustration um, came out of how I was parented or what I observed or what I saw. And I saw like the same ways <laughs> that my mother would do things were the same ways that I would do things. And she did great things. She was an excellent mother. Yeah. But there were other things that I feel like I should improve upon as a believer. And so it can get scary to feel like, yeah. you know, your flaws and your issues will inevitably rub off on your children, but how to limit how much it rubs off on your yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And one of the things that I feel like the Lord has shown me, um, over the course of years that I've been parenting is, um, also through therapy and him sh like literally showing me this is I feel like a lot of times, uh, we can look at the mistakes of our parents and look at the flaws of our parents and say, we're not going to be that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do this. And one of the things I learned in therapy was that I tried so hard not to, not to repeat my father's mistakes that I can potentially miss out on, on, on you know, a lot of things. And so, uh, one of the things that I, that I went through in therapy was just, just looking at the pattern of my life. And a lot of times we talk about generational curses and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Not realizing that a lot of generational curses fall into place when we try so hard to avoid what the generation was before us. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is we end up missing out on so many other things mm -hmm. and so if your father wasn't there you'll make sure you you're, you're always there but you'll forget to provide for your kids mm -hmm. in a way that you need to mm -hmm. and so one of the things that I, I feel like god has taught me as a as a parent is not focusing so much on what my father did not do which is focusing on him mm -hmm. and allowing him to be the foundation of my parenting because mm -hmm. um, he's the perfect father and so if we continue to look at flawed men and what they didn't do we we would probably not do what they did, but miss out on so much other things. I don't know if that made sense. Oh, it made perfect sense. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, therapy and the Lord had to had to show me that. Um, yeah. Our second point is something that me and you talk about a lot, which is because we have three daughters, they require a different sentiment <laughs> out of us. Yeah. And you always talk about how, as a father and as a parent. You really want to make sure that you parent them in gentleness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, growing up, nobody like displayed gentleness. Oh, the South Side of Chicago was like, well, you better be tough. Like, ain't nobody <laughs> gonna be gentle with you out in the streets. You know what I'm saying? When I go to work, <laughs> they're not gonna be gentle with you. So, mm -hmm. and so nobody really gave us permission to feel in that way. Mm -hmm. And so, growing up as a as a black man, I feel like in America where you're taught or you're, you're, you're conditioned to, to, to know that in a lot of ways, society is not always going to be for you. And so I feel like black parents, they do it out of love, but we try to, we, we, we create this, this environment where this is tough love. And so we won't be consumed or swallowed mm -hmm. when we get out, you know, into the real world. Mm -hmm. And so creating an environment that will prepare my child for the real world but also giving them permission to feel and to be gentle. Mm -hmm. And then when they express how they feel, me being able to, yeah, just change the way I've been taught yeah. to handle their emotions, yeah. to handle their feelings, to not dismiss, 
you know, their feelings and their emotions. I made a, a post one time and I said that um, in our home, our children's voices are not uh, as author they're not authoritative, but they're just as valuable. Mm. Uh, meaning that they their their voices matter, their opinions matter, and when they express how they feel, I want to be gentle enough to 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 receive it and to handle it with care. Yeah, I have this theory um, that I I guess I meddled with after like reading and watching you know slave narratives and documentaries and. Uh, books and things like that about how we are only a few generations removed from slavery mm. you know yeah. maybe my great 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 maybe great grandmother grandfather was a slave and when you imagine the emotional life the mental health of a, of a person who is enslaved they are in a world of suffering mm. and so the best way to cope is to distance yourself sometimes emotionally from how you feel, lest you get depressed, lest you break, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think in that season for them, that was what they had to do. Yeah. But I think when you think about how when they were emancipated and had families, what did they teach their families? They taught their families that same sense of survival when it comes to closing off your emotions, closing off your feelings as a defense mechanism from the world. Mm -hmm. And so I think in many ways, black children and parents are the byproducts of people being enslaved and having to fight through things. But I think um, God in his grace now has kind of freed us in a way where we can be much more vulnerable than we used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and we can trust him um, when it comes to our emotions. And so I think in parenting, it's saying, man, I want to be gentle with my child, not to scare them from the world, but to be like Jesus, who says that he is gentle and lowly, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so I want to image him and how I parent my children so that they can be kids that, you know, the older they get, the safer they feel with us. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to, you know, navigating a world that is really wicked and demonic. I want them to be yeah. feel free to be open. Because I think that's one of the reasons why we do it. We don't want to create an environment where our children don't feel safe to come to us. Right about how they feel and why they feel it and so because they will girl stop crying you can't cry the world ain't gonna let you cry it's right. like you can cry here though yeah <laughs> because best, best believe they will find somebody else to vent to yeah you that's know true. Uh, and so we want them to to have a safe space now and so we can always be that that place of safety for them that's why especially as black women you know growing up in, in america yeah our third point is we try hard and it's difficult but we try hard to value and respect the individuality of our children because though our children are in a sense made in our image they are distinct from us they are ultimately made in the image of god mm -hmm. and so that means that they were born into the world with a particular and specific personality that was given to them by god their personality may look like us in some ways but it is ultimately not from us mm -hmm. like that and so I think sometimes the, the, the rub in parenting is how your child's personality kind of is different from yours. So it irritates you. She just, so she, our oldest, she is super, what's the word? Strong willed, very strong, opinionated, <laughs> curious, which makes her, uh, talk a lot, a busybody, nosy. And have a smart mouth. Know it all. <laughs> she thinks she, she thinks she, thinks she knows everything in a lot of ways. And so one of the things we have to remind ourselves is that she is not made in our image. She's made in God's image. And what that does is it helps us to not quench how God has made her, but rather shape how God has made her. And so we want her to have a strong will in a world that will tell her that she should be able to do and love whoever she wants. We, just we want, want her to have a strong yeah, we will. We just want to redirect it in the right way. Correct. We, so we, we God can reign, use this for his glory. You know. We want to be able to reign in the way that God has made her but not destroy the way God has made her. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think a lot of times in in black homes, um, a lot of times we don't we you know it's probably in other homes, but I've grew up in a black family, so I'm speaking for black homes. Uh, black families, we don't we don't really uh, know how to distinguish what's talking back and what somebody is when somebody is really just trying to ass assert who they are hmm. and how they were 
created. And so I think trying to find the balance of parenting our oldest Eden is, man, like maybe she's not talking back. Maybe she's trying to express herself in a way, mm-hmm. um, you know, that 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 explains how she feels and how in, in the in the way she feels it. And so instead of saying stop talking back, let me let me put my pride to the side, sit down with her and help her process how she feels. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing that I we feel like we learned is we're teaching her how to be a communicator. Because I think a lot mm-hmm. of kids talk back because they don't know how to express themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot they of don't kids don't have room to. Yeah, a lot of kids talk back because they never taught how to express themselves. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, knowing how to distinguish the two, because there is an aspect of I me, mean, you just, you just talking crazy <laughs> and you need to, and you, you need, need to be checked. You need to be checked. Uh-huh. And if you keep doing it, we're going to, we're going to lay hands on you. Mm-hmm. Not in a in church a, in way, a, in a, but in a gentle way, but in a gentle way, in Jesus name. Um, but you know, it is an aspect of like, like letting them be themselves and helping them process through that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Know? The fourth point is, in particular with us, and I think it's with people who are raising girls and boys, but there's a, is a different kind of burden that we have when it comes to instilling worth in our children. Um, I know you talk about that a lot, especially as a, as a dad, the weight that you feel when it comes to making sure that your children know that they're valued. Yeah, I, because... I had um, said before that I never want to uh, not tell my children something that they have longed to hear their whole life, which is they're beautiful, they're valuable, they're uh, they're they're worth more than everything. And because uh, because I think one thing that uh, God has made obvious to us that it's it's our job to point them to the fact that they are image bearers Mm -hmm. and because you are image bear you are a person that is worth dignity and 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 honor and value right and so as our uh, as us being their parents it's our job to point them to 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 the glory in which they were created for Mm -hmm. right they were created to glorify god but in the but in a very humanistic sense I, i feel like god also uh created us to want validation from other human beings mm. and the f- the first people who should give us this validation is our parents mm. is the people who should point us to jesus but also let let you know that you have worth and value not just to god but to me mm. and so as a father i don't never want my children to leave my home and get something that they didn't first get here mm. which is a man who will affirm you in the idea that you are beautiful. You don't have to you don't have to give your body up to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. You don't have to give your time up to be beautiful. You don't have to you know, give your body up to be wanted or valuable. Like you are just that because God made you that way. Amen. And you also that because you're special to me. Amen. And so I th- I feel like, you know, when I give them over one day, I don't want beautiful to be a new song to them. Mm-hmm. I want beautiful to always I want it to be an old song to them. Um, but a song that they appreciate, but they've heard so so much from their father, and so yeah, just inst- it's instilling that that value and worth in in my daughters is just very very important to me. Yeah, I was talking to Preston uh, about that last night, and I was saying how you know a lot of us, not everybody, but a lot of us uh, grew up without our dads, and so that's not an experience that we know naturally. You mm-hmm. know, we did have to go elsewhere to feel valued by men, which led us into some destructive paths uh, sometimes. But Mm -hmm. uh, one experience I had with my dad in particular is um, I have a gap. And I felt felt very insecure about my gap growing up um, just because, you know, you don't see gaps like that. And I was about to get it closed. I was probably 14, so this is in high school. And I had already, my mother was looking at doctors that had helped me get it closed because she understood she has a gap too. So she was like, if you want to close it, you can. And so one of the rare times that I was with my dad, I was telling him, hey, I'm thinking about getting my gap closed. And he was like, really? I said, yeah. And he was like, why would you do that? And he was like, that was the first thing that attracted me to your mother was her gap. And I, th- I just think gaps are beautiful. And what I told Preston was the crazy thing is that when he said it, It wasn't that I just wanted to not get my gap closed to make him happy. It was that his his affirmation of the beauty of the gap actually made me believe that it was beautiful too. Mm. And I think that just speaks to the 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 heavy, heavy, heavy like 
gift that dads can be uh, to their daughters and to their sons in instilling worth and value um, and beauty and how they see themselves in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which leads us to our last point, which is trusting God to parent us as we parent, but also trusting God to parent them as we parent mm-hmm. because we figuring it out. We, we, a lot of what we're doing is just trusting the spirit bit by does this work? Will this work? Should I do that? Should I say this? Should I not? Su-? Like, it's like you can read a bunch of books in the world, but the books don't have descriptions on how to help your child yeah. who's made in God's image, who is complicated and interesting and has a different path than somebody else might have. And so I feel like I have to remind myself that God is my father. And so because he is my father, he is parenting me as I parent. But not only that, I have to remember that I am not parenting alone. Mm -hmm. Like God's hand is on me, but his hand is on them too, Mm -hmm. which helps me to realize, oh, like you're with me in this. Yeah. 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 One thing that um, being parented, well, one, I didn't, I didn't, I, I feel like before I became a father, I feel like I, I I more so recognize God as a good Lord, a good mm-hmm. King. Um, but when I became a father, I knew He was my father, you know. But I but it, it became more of a reality of me to me, like how much God is a father. And so just being reminded of that. But also God has kind of showed me that like you need to you need to consistently pay attention to my relationship to you as it relates to being the father to 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 know how to father your 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 That's good. Your, your children yeah. because i think when we pay attention to the grace that we that god has given us consistently we will automatically be more gracious to our children i think if we pay attention to you know the patience that god has with us uh, with our arrogance, with our pride, with our laziness, our selfishness, I think that then we'll be able to be more patient with our children uh, as it relates to all of their flaws and sins. And so, uh, I don't know, man. Like, since I've been a father, it's been a consistently God. Pause. Go back upstairs. Eden, go back upstairs, Have Danny get you a snack. You got to go upstairs. Yeah, I feel like God, like, wants us to uh, consistently just look to him, you know, to, to be that parent, to be that father, to be that mother. Because I, I feel often that I lose sight of the grace that I've been given as a son. Hmm. You know, I feel, I, 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 you know, I, I have to be reminded of that often, of how much patience God has for me. And also, too, it's in, 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 a, in a very, like, in a more deeper level. Like, at the end of the day, I know my children, but I don't know my children like God knows me. No. He knows the ins and out of my heart. So I, I kind of know them by, you know, examining them, um, looking looking at their behaviors. But I'm still very, you know, human yeah. and, and very, I, I'm not I'm not infinite and, and all knowing like God is. And so God knows the ins and out of my ins and outs of my heart. And he still is patient with me. Yeah. He still is loving with me. He still is kind to me. Um, he still gives me time to grow. And so just understanding God in the aspect of a father has helped me so much to to be patient with them. Yeah, I remember when I was in the world, uh, my cousin Keisha, she prayed for me um, and just felt really, I guess, discouraged because I was just off into some things that she just didn't want me to be off into. And she wasn't my parent, but I believe what God guided her with um, is per- pertinent for parents in general, which is she went to God and said, God, like, did I not do enough? Did I not say enough? Did I not pray enough? Um, and God was like, calm down. I don't think that's, if that's what he said for real, he might say, be still my child, but he said, calm down. I love her more than you do. And I think that should anchor us as parents, as our children grow, whether they are infants, mm. toddlers, middle schoolers, teens, and adults, it's that God loves our children more than we do and one of the the edification that, that i've got from like older saints is that as you parent you just plant seeds and all of it is a mystery is it gonna sprout is it gonna water what's gonna happen and eventually at some point you look back and you see that god was the one watering the seeds that you planted the entire time and so i think that it alleviates us from having so much anxiety or putting too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect but to remind ourselves that god in his parenting is sovereign and loving too and so mm. i hope that encourages y'all um on tonight yeah god bless you god bless y'all
That's why I pause. I say, uh, and then I pause to gather my thoughts before I speak. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for, um, again, for Charlie Dates. Thank you for Progressive. Thank you for the way uh, that you are using them to edify your edify your church and to even uh, be a benefit to the south side of Chicago. Mm. I pray, God, that you would help us to just empower them and edify them and uh, love on them through the small wisdom that you've given us and the small amount of time that we've been parents. I pray, God, that you would guide me and press in, that you would help our words, that you would help our, our language, our care. I pray, God, that uh, you would help us be just specific and intentional with what we say. I pray that um, you would um, guide what we have to say and that it will be really, really fruitful. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Oh, and technical difficulties. I pray that you would be with Kim. Um, you would be with the cameras in Jesus' and name. And also, Lord, I pray that you Sheba. would just give me uh, just clarity of mind, <laughs> um, wake me up. Um, help me to gather my Don't thoughts. Don't wake me up. Uh, excuse Jackie for interrupting me while I'm talking to you. I, it's kind of rude, but you know she's flawed. And so, um, yeah, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.